Um, as I said, I, I work with Arches 300 pound uh, cold press paper. And so we've gone from there to the drawing already projected onto the paper. It's more like a contour drawing of the different shapes of the different values of zero, 25%, 50, 75, and 100% on the grayscale. And what I've done here is save the white highlights. So it's not just the whites, but this is the highlights of the whites. Um, and when you look at the original picture that I was working with, you don't see all these dots that I've put in here, the light bulbs of the sign, but I wanted to show those in there as a white highlight. And along here also some of these light bulbs that are also left as white highlights. Um, you'll notice that the white through here, along through here, is still not masked. So what my first step is after masking out the white highlights is to essentially tone the paper. And I will do that first off with a layer of water, then a light layer of color with the atomizer, but I'm only going to be using the yellow and the permanent rose, and then a layer of water on top of that to kind of wash the color through. And that will give me the toned paper to start with. All right, so now we're getting ready to do the, the first paint layer. And for those of you who've been paying attention, you might notice that there's a slight difference here. The, the plastic is coating over the work surface now. So this is just a drop cloth I got at a big box hardware store. Uh, John calls this my Dexter phase because of that TV show where Dexter was always wrapping up all his bodies in plastic. Uh, I do this just to protect the area around because there's obviously some, some overspray. If I had been doing this in person, then we would have had uh, the first row of seats would have been in the splash zone. Everybody would have had a little sheet of plastic to keep from getting overspray. So again, the first two colors I'm going to be using are just the yellow and the permanent rose. Mix those up again. And first off, starting with just spraying some water, just plain clear water onto the paper. <clears throat> and again, in order to make sure I've got a nice even layer of the water, this is where I'll use a brush just to smooth that out. And so once I've got this clear layer of water on, then I can go on to lightly add some color to the paper. Now, I have my drawing here at hand off to the side. You can't see it there, but this will give me some general idea about where I want my lightest lights and then some of the mid ranges. So what I'm doing is I've opened the top for the yellow, insert the atomizer in, and easily just blow. And so I put mostly the yellow area around where the lights are. After I pull the atomizer out of the container of pigment, then I just put that into the water and blow just to clear any of the pigment that remains in the atomizer out. So, and now I'm just gonna do some of the permanent rows. Moving the atomizer again. As you can see, the color is slowly kind of mingling on through here. And <clears throat> I'll use the clear spray water to kind of move those around. And do some tilting with it as well. And you can see I'm just kind of following along on the drawing here so I know exactly where I want to have that value saved. And that's what, we're, what we really are doing right now at this point. <clears throat> we are just saving values. And this, what, this value that we're saving now is zero. It is the value of white, not the masked whites. These are the masked whites here, but now this is just going to be just the value zero. And I, I kind of find it easier for me to use these numerical breakdowns of the different values. 
if I call it a, a zero versus a 25, then I kind of know where that works out in the color scale on my drawing. Now, again, if you find that you do one of these little dots by mistake and it's not time, just let it dry and then you can go back and fill it in. And sometimes looking at the drawing, you'll see areas that, hmm, that maybe ought to be darker or lighter. And you can, and I'm now going to apply a little bit of clear white, clear uh, water. And then I will use the pigments with the mouth atomizer in a very light uh, coating. So again, this is just trying to create a 25% value effect. So this is the yellow. <clears throat> again, shaking it up to get the pigment evenly dispersed. Using my drawing, I will look again where the areas where the lights are, then that I want to concentrate the lighter pigment there. So with the mouth atomizer, you can create a fine stream. The harder you blow, the finer the mist. I can create droplets by blowing very, very lightly with it. I don't know if you can see that on there. I'll show it in the pink, it will show up more. You can create texture also by intermittently blowing it, but I like you're trying to play an instrument, like a clarinet. Do you see that droplets fly out? So that will give you some interesting texture through there. <clears throat> Again, clean the atomizer. That way you keep each of your bottles of pigment pure as possible. <clears throat> this is the permanent rose. Okay, hard blow, fine mist. You can see that not blowing nearly as hard, much more spatter looking effect. I can't emphasize how important it is to clean the atomizer between each color. I'm going to use a little bit of the blue, but only at the very end because this blue, this phthalo blue is so darn strong, it will overtake the painting very quickly. So I'm just going to kind of look here again, assess where I want some more color. And you can see when I'm adding the yellow on top of the permanent rose, it's creating a nice orange effect there. Okay, once again, clean out the atomizer. And if you see there's paint on the exterior, just dunk the atomizer in the water. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to use just a little bit of the cobalt not the cobalt, this is the phthalo, excuse me. Um, and realizing that if I put it up onto the yellow, it's gonna give us some green. If I put it against the permanent rose, I'm gonna see purple. And where I have the orange and this blue going in, it's gonna kind of gray it down. Again, just going very, very lightly with the blue. Clean up the atomizer. <clears throat> and now just kind of let it sit, blend, do its thing. So this layer that's on here now, this is a 25% value. And you can see there's some very interesting texture showing up in here along where the permanent rose is meeting with the phthalo blue. There are dots of the permanent rose in the yellow that have not created an orange. There are areas of just the thale blue here against the yellow, making kind of a green hue. Um, I go back around where I see these areas starting to puddle with paper towel and just sop, and sop that up a little bit. So if I, if I have an area that's just pretty like flat with the color and not very interesting, um, I can go back in with, with water, just plain water and use that to create some texture. 